in your usual way of thinking, you've also managed something. So, uh, Breath, you please come up and tell us how it all works. Thank you. I think probably the most important, which is something people tend to forget, is the passengers. The people that do fly with us will be created by uh, All of government space flight is focused around making sure that they not all of the engineers instructions to the limit. And I think that's why we've gone almost 50 been the kind of breakthroughs that will come that tell us why we're doing this. And uh, you have to be uh, willing to challenge uh, uh, what we're doing. And I believe that, that uh, within the first decade of the public flying, why, and with the, because you're innovative, because you're, you're questioning, and uh, I believe there's going to be breakthroughs in the first decade breakthrough that will be in the first pair of years uh, on the subject of why are we doing this and what can we do with it. Just for very much like personal computer was just, and then breakthrough came to the internet. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell you just a little uh, background Alan, how we got uh, in his curiosity of of, uh, of space. As a child, he used to go to the Cape and he launches. Very interested in doing something commercially in manned space. And uh, their access was nothing. There's still nothing out there in terms of access to orbit that's affordable. Public. Uh, the main thing that we did on our research program, which ran from 2001 to 2004, is we demonstrated several new technologies in the facility they, they address the risks of the public flying in space. And they address the launching plane flying above 85% of the atmosphere uh, can actually take uh, payloads to uh, the altitudes uh, to go out to the atmosphere uh, in half the size of one that takes off from the ground. And of course, we have enormous uh, safety benefits by uh, shut down launching uh, at because of point, or as it can't if it takes off from the ground. I would like to introduce and have you guys come up and, and introduce to you my not a sole designer. In fact, uh, I have not been well lately. These guys here are, are the ones that are the the, uh, are running our design first mats developments up our, our, our development. and uh, Bob Morgie, Bob of our design team that's, that's developing the launch airplane uh, and Jim Ty who is a uh, project engineer for the spaceship is also the best aerodynamist that I know and he's the chief aerodynamist at, at Scaled Composites. Uh, Pete Sabonio, who is the chief of flight director, the data system, the telemetry, and all the avionics for the system fixed. And he's an emulator that you'll ever see, and it's in operation at scale uh, now. Also, Luke Colby, who's a propulsion designer. The, uh, Okay, I'm going to turn the mic over uh, to Matt and have him uh, give you a little bit of our uh, introduction. We'll be talking about the rationale on why these things look different than what you saw on the Virgin website last month. <laughs> right, thanks, Bert. Hello, you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, really cool. Is that project? I think uh, being here up on the stage with these guys, you know, kind of tells it all. It's just a fun job. Um, th there's a couple of things I'll be in real quick. Uh, first is is the team. First of all, let's let's talk about this. You know, you got Richard Branson, Bert Rutan uh, paired together. There's just not a better team. These guys are great customers. Bert, Richard, and the crew. A unique knack to pull together. Probably the best designers on the planet. Drag them out to the middle of nowhere uh, with nothing to do but design. And uh, really cool so guys for being such a team. And the third thing is, even as we speak here today, back in Mojave, there's a, a very dedicated team of men and women 
just pouring their heart and souls into building the best, beautiful, safest craft probably ever to see uh, see the light of day. So thanks to my team, especially. I'll touch on real briefly, just the, uh, my job is more or less a cheerleader to keep everybody motivated. And if you look at these two vehicles, I mean, there's no way my job can be anybody's motivated, everybody's excited. So uh, to talk a little bit about why they look the way they do, I'm gonna hand it off to the two guys that know the best. So uh, we're gonna be taking the mothership. Thank you, Matt. Uh, as you can see, the White Knight 2 is a twin boom configuration for and uh, and low drag for high altitude carrying of the Spaceship 2 as well as other large payloads to high altitude. The, uh, as well as being twin boom, it's also a twin cabin. It shares much in common with both the Spaceship, uh, using the same philosophy we adopted on the Spaceship 1 program, which was to these features in common to enhance the safety, provide crew proficiency training, as well as future astronaut zero-g experience training. It uses four Pratt & Whitney engines. We've gotten fantastic support from our partner, Pratt & Whitney efficiency. The uh, design allows uh, the crew to be able to see each other from cabin to cabin. Unlike the previous version, we're able to, because of its cabin's effects previously, so that we have this lateral configuration. And now I'd like to hand you over to uh, Jim Tyson and explain a little bit about the spaceship. Get back here so I can uh, point out some of the features of spaceship. First of all, spaceship is really different in four side ways for uh, which one. Shop every day and just think, my God, this one's big. And uh, it, it really starts with the cabin. The, I'm six feet three, and the cabin ceiling is about this far above my head. It's a uh, nice size of my cabin. Relative to Spaceship One, which was a cramped uh, three-person capsule, and you're packed in there, like it's it's about the same volume as a phone booth. I, that was probably a good way to think about it. These windows, windows, eighteen. So the lucky passengers will be able to get very close to the windows, and in the case of flying from Mojave, see all the way to the Gulf of California, all the view. Uh, team in the sim, but I uh, can't wait to see it for real. So, so it, it also was lucky ability to get six seats and float around. Something we weren't able to do with Spaceship One. So it's a it's a passenger focused, really uh, soul experience and hard soul. Experience. That's really on top of that. Since it is a uh, commercial vehicle, we've got a lot of safety fees. The uh, this is great. Which there's actually a two actuators, each of which can raise and lower the feather. And that concept extends to the rest of the airplane. There's two systems lower landing events of any critical component of failure. The vehicle will be just fine. Um, also, this vehicle. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? I just saw it a lot. Let me know when you want to stop. It's it's a, it's a brilliant innovation uh, that uh, Bert came up with, and it really is the heart and soul of the of the spaceship.